Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a somewhat intriguing concept that, if proven correct, would one day definitively show us that the Big Bang actually happened, while also confirming a lot of other cosmological ideas and confirming that our understanding of the universe is more or less correct. But the problem is that it's kind of difficult to do this using modern technology, and more importantly, it involves something that's almost impossible to detect. But despite of this, that something currently is going through your body, with practically trillions and trillions of these particles going through you right now, every single second. Except that they don't actually do anything inside of you, and they barely interact with any matter. And so I guess the question is, what exactly are we talking about? We're talking about neutrinos. But not just any neutrinos. We're talking about some of the first neutrinos that appeared in the entire universe. The unusual particles that very likely were created approximately one second after the universe began, and most likely represent what the scientists refer to as cosmological neutrino background, CNB. Not to be confused with CMB, cosmological microwave background. And essentially, it's really the same principle here. This behind me, CMB, that's basically been observed for many, many years now, represents the oldest light or the oldest electromagnetic spectrum in the entire universe that suddenly appeared approximately 380,000 years after the beginning of the universe, when the entire universe cooled down just enough and allowed various photons to finally pass through extremely hot plasma. Prior to this, the entire universe was just a little bit too hot, and so everything was basically opaque. And so back in the 50s, when the scientists originally proposed the idea of the Big Bang Theory, or the expansion of the universe from a tiny point, one of the signs that they wanted to discover that would basically prove their hypothesis was the presence of this first light that they believed formed not so long after the universe began. But the actual CMB was discovered completely by accident. It was basically this unusual background noise heard in this home down horn antenna, one of the first microwave antenna that was used for satellite communication. And so this weird ear looking platform accidentally discovered CMB, confirming a lot of scientific propositions. And the biggest one was by the famous Georges Lemaitre, whose video you can actually find in the description, because very recently the scientists found the only actual interview with this particular scientist, who unfortunately is always overshadowed by other scientists like Einstein, even though he's one of the few people that proved Einstein wrong. Check out that video in the description. But anyway, this was a pretty definitive proof of the Big Bang Theory. But there were still some inconsistencies, and there were also some things that the scientists wanted to confirm even more. And for this reason, some scientists started to actually propose another type of background. Something that would be even older than the oldest light. And something that would provide us with information about the early universe in the first 300,000 years. The concept referred to as cosmic neutrino background. And a concept that, up until recently, was more or less theoretical, but there were some indirect observations of this back in 2015. We'll discuss this in a few seconds. Importantly though, all of this is based on neutrinos, particles that stayed theoretical and as a potential explanation for other phenomena for several decades. Here's actually one of the first confirmations of a neutrino event observed on November of 1970. This eventually led to a Nobel Prize. And the thing about neutrinos is that they only interact with everything through gravity and through the weak force not through electromagnetism or the strong force. And because of this, they basically pass through most matter without touching anything. As I mentioned, trillions of neutrinos go through each of us right now, and we have no idea it's even happening. But unlike CMB, which is basically light that travels at speed of light, neutrinos are particles, and they do contain a little bit of mass. Not a lot of mass, but some mass. And because of this, over time their speeds change, and over time they also lose a lot of energy. And so even though the scientists have been able to prove the existence of neutrinos by basically seeing their interaction using weak force and by building these enormous neutrino detectors that usually detect one or two of these particles, here's for example one from Fermilab, and this is sort of what it looks like on the inside, in reality all of the neutrinos we're detecting in these super complex machines are usually from the sun or from some really powerful events such as various supernova or various gamma ray bursts. In other words, we're detecting some of the most massive and most powerful neutrinos ever. But neutrinos come in a lot of different flavors, with each of the types also containing a lot of different amounts of energy. And so certain types, even today, are very difficult to find. But when it comes to cosmic neutrino background, when it comes to CNB, this is basically as low in energy as you can get. These particular particles are predicted to have been created in the first second after the universe began. 
and they would have been traveling through all of this ancient plasma, ignoring all of the matter. But over time they would slow down just enough to now most likely be traveling at just a few thousand kilometers per second as opposed to the speed of light. And because of this, their actual energy, or I guess their mass, would be extremely small, which means that they're practically impossible to detect. More powerful neutrinos, like the ones coming from the sun, normally contain a lot of energy, or a lot of mass, and in some cases, by hitting certain atoms, can transform one of the protons into a neutron, which ends up transforming certain chemical elements. So for example, it can turn a chlorine atom into an atom of argon. And so for example, back in the 70s, by using a really large tank containing chlorine, the formation of argon inside the tank was explained by these high-energy neutrinos. This also led to a Nobel Prize. But in order to avoid any interaction with anything else, such as cosmic rays, this is usually done really, really deep in the ground. Or maybe even under ice, like in the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory located in Antarctica. This one is the most advanced we have right now, able to even create a three-dimensional picture of where these neutrinos came from. But there are some other, more sensitive ways of detecting neutrinos, such as even using things like tritium and hydrogen, that can be used to detect neutrinos. And in theory, tritium can actually detect these particular neutrinos because it's sensitive enough. But the amount of detections would just not be enough. It would more or less resemble a kind of a statistical noise that would be very difficult to prove as a real detection. But there is at least one project, known as Ptolemy, that's currently looking for neutrinos using the idea of tritium. You can read more about this in this paper in the description below. And so does that mean that we'll probably never find these neutrinos, and thus we'll never be able to definitively prove Big Bang Theory? Well, not really. As a matter of fact, one of the first potential proofs came from the observations of CMB itself. Turns out that certain cosmic microwave background irregularities were best explained because of the interaction with cosmic neutrinos whose temperature was about 1.95 Kelvin, which was about 1 degree colder than the CMB itself. This is based on a study that you can find in the description from 2015 that was able to mathematically prove that these strange observations in the CMB were probably pointing at something else happening even before CMB, but something involving particles with extremely small mass or very small energy. Something like 100 to 200 microelectron volts. And that's energy that's billions of times lower than a typical neutrino that we can still detect using things like the ice cube in Antarctica. And so what do we do then? How do we possibly find them? Well, there is at least one proposition that, once again, you can find in a description. And the proposition here is kind of clever. We know that they don't travel at fast velocities, but they still interact, or in theory, should interact with various types of matter. So then why don't we actually accelerate that matter, making them collide with potentially cosmic neutrinos at much faster velocities? In other words, why don't we use a particle accelerator? Because then, in theory, we could actually accelerate matter colliding it with those neutrinos, overall producing the effect as if they were moving much faster. And by itself, this could technically work. But the problem here is that, well, once again, the energy is just a little bit too low, not high enough to still discover them. And so first of all, to even make this work, we have to turn all of these atoms, which by themselves are neutral, into some kind of an ion that can then be accelerated. We then have to accelerate them to a fraction of the speed of light. But even using the largest particle accelerator located in Switzerland, in order to turn chlorine into argon using these neutrinos, we would still require like a million times more energy. So even here, the energy is just not enough. But in theory, it's possible to maybe use other atoms. Maybe helium. Helium should turn into tritium if moving fast enough toward a certain neutrino. Although here we're still a little bit short. Not a million times short, but about a hundred times. And so here, it's kind of more about finding the right atom that can then become ionized and used for this unusual experiment, which technically could even be conducted today. And so there's at least one possible way we could maybe discover these cosmic background neutrinos, or at least prove their existence once and for all. But I guess the question is, is the only reason we're doing this just to prove the Big Bang? Well, not really. Because unlike CMB, which presents us with a kind of a two-dimensional image, mostly because light travels at the same speed, because neutrinos travel at different speeds, passing through various objects at different times, in some sense, they create a kind of a three-dimensional scan of everything they pass through in the last 13.8 billion years. So not only can they help us create a more three-dimensional image of the entire universe, in theory, if we find a way to detect them quite easily, they can expand the two-dimensional image of the cosmic microwave background, 
into a beautiful three-dimensional picture of everything from the first second going all the way to modern times, which would be a groundbreaking discovery for modern physics, would very likely lead to a Nobel Prize, but also once again prove the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe as presented by modern cosmologists. Although I guess the other question is, what if we find nothing? Well, that's of course also going to be really intriguing and might lead to even more discoveries leading to alternative propositions that do not involve the Big Bang. Either way though, intriguing topic, something that the scientists are going to be trying to find in the next few years, but something that we might never find at all. These neutrinos are just extremely difficult to see and practically invisible even though they're all over the place at all times. As a matter of fact, certain types of neutrinos have even been used as a potential explanation for the mysterious dark matter. But that's a different story for a different day. And so, at least for now, we can only assume that these neutrinos most likely are out there, especially based on that study from 2015. But creating a three-dimensional map based on their detection is going to be extremely challenging. Nevertheless, we're going to discuss similar concepts in some of the future videos, so make sure to subscribe. Also check out one of the previous videos in the description based on similar concepts involving neutrinos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.